Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Nelson. I'm going to talk to you about navigating professional conference uh, presentations. Uh, so before we get started, I just want to know who's in the audience. So if you just tell me your name, um, what field of study you're in, and what uh, whether master's, doctoral, student, whatever. Okay. Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Karen Zerda, and I'm in my final semester of my master's of arts and communication. Okay. I have a PhD application that's been sent in, so hopefully continuing it at the doctoral level next year. Nice. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Hi, my name is Natalie. I'm a master's student currently halfway through the program, and the program is the Fisheries and Mariculture program here. Thanks. Alright, thanks. Yeah. Alicia Raj, I'm in my second year of the doctoral program, Education Leadership. Alright, thank you. Okay. So, um, and, and y'all are just observe, y'all are just doing things back there. Right. Okay, I'm gonna leave you back there. All right. So, we'll go ahead and get started. So, what I'm gonna talk to you about, let me go to this side so I'm not standing in front of you. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna go over some um, areas that you really need to be aware of when you're preparing your conference proposal, uh, and then um, some areas of what you do when you're actually at the conference. Okay. And so we're going to talk about some conference details, okay, so that helps shape how you're going to write up your proposal and how you're going to deliver your presentation. Uh, understanding who your audience is, okay, because you're going to need to speak to your audience. Uh, we'll talk about the actual proposal process, what's involved in there, what you need to know, and representation. So how do you need to represent yourself and your research or whatever um, content you're trying to um, present. We'll talk about the title and how to craft a catchy title so people look at the program and say, wow, you know what, I really want to go to this because it sounds pretty awesome. Uh, we'll look at the content overview. So what's involved in the process of writing this propo proposal? What, what do we actually need to put into the content um, so that we're informing the reviewers of, you know, best how, um, best informing the reviewers of how important this is for us to present. Uh, your learning objectives, so people know what they're getting out of your session. And citations, what do you do with those? Because writing a conference proposal is very different than writing a literature review or a uh, manuscript for publication. Okay, so starting with the conference details, we need to look at the focus. And so I'm totally just giving you some that are in my area of expertise, which is counseling. I'm a counselor educator. And so, um, you know, these are our main, uh, some of our main conferences. So ACA is American Counseling Association. And um, then we have ACES, TCA, and a cervix. And so these are um, specialties. So ACES, that is a national one. TCA is a, a state one. And a cervix is also a national, but it's a specific branch. So all of these different um, conferences have different focus. Okay, have a different focus. Uh, and so that's something I need to be aware of when I am writing my proposal and thinking about what I want to present and where it's appropriate. Okay. Think about the theme. Uh, so most conferences now have a theme. So think about does your proposal fit the theme um, or is it, you know, how, how is it related? And so some of ours uh, we focus on, I know that some of our past conferences we've had in the counseling field have been related to resiliency. Another one is a military focus, how we're going to work with military vets and so forth. So what are some kind of themes or conferences, conferences and themes that, that uh, you'll be um, attending and, and needing to focus on? Really, I'll be attending one the next week here it's the Moses in New Orleans it's Gulf of Mexico and ecosystem science okay and so as far as I know there's a lot of people attending there who background in oil spills and fisheries okay related all right okay. anybody else I'm not signed up for anything right now but I know like uh, with the National Com Association I think things have been like changed they're okay. usually pretty broad Okay, yeah, they usually are pretty broad to fit, yeah, a lot in there, okay. Anything? My, uh, Ash last year had uh, student professionals, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, it had about, it was about student success, but um, continuity of that after graduation, how to put things in place uh, where you can have a nice, efficient thing going on. Oh, okay. So something like that. I don't know what they have this year. Nice, okay. So think about that when um, you're looking at a conference that 
you know, for us, we know exactly like which ones we really need to go to, which ones are like an area of interest that's an extra one. So, you know, like I said, ACA is a big one for us. So is ACES. TCA, that's a Texas Counseling Association, so that's that's state. We're, you know, see folks from Texas. Um, a CERVIC is Association for Spiritual, Ethical, and Religious Values and Counseling. So obviously that's going to be within the, that, that range of, of interests. And so I know I'm already going to present, you know, research or content that is going to be related to one of these um, areas. And so think about that. And then um, think about your theme. So what is the theme of the content? So think about what you're writing. Okay, know your audience. So who will you attend your session? So would it be teachers that are attending your session? Would it be environmental specialists? I'm sure there's another word in there that I don't know. But Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's what I've been thinking too. Like there, environmental focused, yeah. Sure. There you go. <laughs> uh, or you know, with the, when you take your your larger organizations and you break it down into special areas, who's going to attend? Okay. Uh, and then who is your target on audience? So if I'm going to present at the American Counseling Association conference, which is a huge national conference, well, there's all types of counselors there, but who's the target audience for my session? Well, then I need to align that. Well, what are my expertise? So if my expertise are marriage, couple, and family counseling, then I'm probably going to be doing a session that's going to target marriage, couple, family counselors. If my research is about um, trauma and resiliency, well, I'm probably going to be um, speaking to folks that work with trauma survivors. Okay. When you start your presentation, so moving past, you've already written your proposal, it was accepted, congratulations, you're going to the conference and you're going to present there. Okay, so you know who you're presenting to, you know your target audience. So when you come into your room and you see all those people there and you're ready to present your content, give a brief audience introduction. So I kind of modeled that a little bit when we started. We have a small group here. Uh, so it was a very, very brief introduction. But I told you who I was and asked who you were. So who you are. So when I'm doing a presentation, I usually go ahead and start because I'm, I'm speaking to a larger group. Lots of people have no idea who they are. And uh, I tell them my, you know, who I am and a little bit about my background, perhaps you know, where I work and what my area of expertise is, what's my clinical experience. Um, just a little bit uh, about myself. And then I want to know who's in the audience. <clears throat> now, if I have a session with 100 people in it, I'm not going to say, let's go around one by one, tell me your name, your area of interest, your area of expertise, and so forth. That's going to take my whole entire session, right? So a way to kind of feel out who's in my audience, I go ahead and say, who all, is, who all in here is a student, OK? Who all is a, pra who's a, a practicing clinician? Um, who specializes with marriage, couple, family counseling, whatever it is. So I kind of gauge, well, where, where do I stand? Who am I speaking to? And that way, if I have a larger audience of students, well, I probably need to gear my conversation with them a little differently if, than if I have, you know, a large group of practicing professionals. So just a little tip there. And like I said, so you speak to your audience. Who's there? All right. And sometimes you have a very mixed crowd. And so you really need to be flexible. Am I speaking with experienced professionals? Am I speaking with students? Is it a mix? And then how do I go ahead and meet the needs of both? Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. So now looking at the larger conference itself. So we're stepping outside of your session and just looking at the entire conference. Who would be attending this conference? So, like I said, if I'm going to be going to the American Counseling Association conference, I know there's counselors from all over the country with all different areas of expertise. Um, if I'm going to the American, you know, play therapy conference, well, I know that I'm going to be working with, I'm going to be talking with a lot of play therapists. So think about that um, when you're when you're attending a conference. Who will be attending, and who do you need to network with? So as students. Who would you want to network with at a conference? Potential employers. <laughs> yeah. Maybe their potential colleagues. Mm -hmm. Workers or just anyone to collaborate with or your friend down the road for support or advice. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
And so think about that when you're going. And then I know it's different based on the year of your study. So as a doctoral student, your first year is very different from your second year. It's very different from your third year. And who you need to be networking right, with, right? You're not necessarily you know, applying for a job in, in year one. Uh, but year two, you're starting to look around and starting to meet with people. Okay, so think about who you need to network with. And then once you're in the practice, and you're a practicing professional, maybe you're looking at who can I collaborate with for research? You know, I have these ideas, they have these really cool ideas, how can we blend these together? How can we do like an interdisciplinary approach to our research? Okay. And then think about how will your attendance impact, have an impact there? Okay, so just where you're at right now in your studies. How would your attendance to a conference have an impact? What comes up for you? Anything? Well, uh, I attended uh, the Council for Ethnic Participation. It was one of the uh, things, uh, part of ASH, and that one was focused on uh, minorities in higher ed. And most of the representation, if there were 10 people in the committee, uh, seven will be black, two will be Hispanic, and one will be Asian. So, when my uh, for my presentation, my starting my opening line was uh, the, percep the perception that I bring in as a South Asian member. Of, I, I think I was the only one, or I think I was one of the person in the entire conference. So that was a, in a perspective that wasn't seen over there. All right. So that was sure. my setting point. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Y'all have anything you want to share? Don't feel pressure, just if something's coming to you. It's just being a current graduate student, and if I would speak with other graduate students in this field, and if they have a similar method of study, how can I exchange ideas with them if they've already started something? Yeah. And for me, I guess maybe the chance to meet like a lot of the big scholars in our field, because they all go to like the big NCA conference. Yeah, so like getting to speak to the experts, and I think that would be really cool. That's what I'm looking forward to. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we're going to back up to this this proposal because now we've already walked our way through the conference. We've talked about what it would be like to write the proposal briefly, and then getting into the conference, and then networking and presenting. So now we really know we want to get there, right? Like we want to be at a conference, we want to present, we want to network. Okay, so let's go back to the initial proposal considerations, because we want our proposal to be accepted. Okay, so check the requirements in advance, all right? Because each conference proposal has a different requirement. A lot of similarities, usually you know you have a title, some content, and learning objectives. But not all are the same. I know with some of our conferences, they're very brief. I can write a proposal in you know no time. And then other ones, it's it's quite a lengthy process, and I have to get all these variables together to make a really strong proposal. So check the uh, requirements in advance and when it's due. Look at the presentation format. Okay? So do you want to do a content session, a poster session, or a round table? And do you have you have you all had any experience with these? Know the difference between content session, round table, or poster? And is this the same in your discipline? I've only done a poster yeah. before, and that's what I'm about to do next. Another poster, so I'm not familiar with the talks or the okay. round table. Okay. I know what they are, I've never done them before. Okay. So, <clears throat> content session is typically like a teaching session. It's almost, for most of them, I see a, a lecture format. So you have the speaker, you have the audience, and it's really just a lecture format. However, I know lots of them that get really interactive now. I am really trying to, to up the, the experience, and more like an interactive experiential classroom experience. Um, then you have the round table, which, for me, and, and my discipline came uh, into popularity, oh gosh, um, it, it wasn't always a popular thing until, I would say like maybe I saw it more often about five, seven years ago. And it's really nice because it's just literally going to this big room and there's these round tables with like maybe eight to ten chairs and you are assigned a table. 
And so you might have, I don't know, 100 tables in, in a room, and I'm just making up numbers here. And let's, maybe that's a lot. Let's say you have like 50 tables in a room, and you have 10 presenters, and you're spread out, okay? And you're assigned a table, and you sit there with your handouts, and when your session time comes, people come and sit. You might have one person at your table. You might have people sitting at all chairs at the table and standing around your table because they all want to hear from you. You just never know. Um, it's kind of a nice little intimate setting, though, uh, where it's really, you know, getting these little personal, you know, real, uh, it's more personable and these great conversations, conversations really flowing versus the lecture format. So there's benefits to all of them. And of course the poster you seem like you're familiar with where you stand there and people walk up to you and ask you questions and then move on to the next poster. Uh, so you can have fun with each of these. And the, the round table I think is an excellent uh, asset if you are looking into research or collaboration. Yes. Because that is, uh, instead of you going out to look for people with similar interests, that brings about 10 people to you. Mm -hmm. So you know they have a shared interest. Yeah. Oh, it, it, I, I have had some of the greatest conversations at roundtables, mm -hmm. and really, um, I think I've spurred off like three um, research studies just in the last like year, just from those conversations. Okay. So, what think about this? What type of session do you like to attend? So, have you attended all of these types? Which one do you prefer? Roundtable. Roundtable. All right. What about y'all? I've never been to one before. Okay. So, but I, I think I, uh, I think I'd like either the round table or the content session. Okay. I think the poster was different, just definitely tailoring to whoever was approaching you since it would seem like a stranger and you know their background, so you would get a little information and give some back. I would be interested in the round, round table too. Mm -hmm. Actually, just so it's more collaborative and not just standing so much in front of a yeah. big blowout poster. Yeah. Yep. So I would say, you know, think about what you like to attend and then write a proposal for that. So, uh, you know, if you really like, I mean, obviously you haven't done the round table yet, but hopefully you're going to experience one soon. Uh, but think about that when you're doing your presentation uh, proposal. What do you like to attend? So what would you want to offer? Uh, and just going back to that too, I just want to remind you, you can be very creative. I've seen, <laughs> I, I saw one that was this, this, this one uh, counselor, she really wanted to do a content session, and, but she didn't get the content session slot. She got a poster session. She's like, okay, well, I can make this work. Well, it's about yoga <laughs> and counseling. And, and in no time, she had this crowd around her poster. I mean, people were having to like move out of the way to make room for all these other people and everybody's doing poses and stuff. It was great, it was fantastic. She made it work, so you can be creative. Okay, so let's look at some writing tips to get your proposal accepted. <clears throat> like I said, know the deadline. You don't want to be writing your proposal the day before it's due, although that does happen sometimes. Uh, you want to give yourself plenty of time. Don't procrastinate. I know you're probably like, wow, this sounds just like, you know, my professor telling me to get my assignments done on time. But it really does matter. Don't procrastinate. Uh, start early. And the reason that you want to start early is because you can edit over time. Uh, if you're anything like me, I write something down, I'm like, I think this is great. And then I walk away two hours, come back to it later, two hours later, and I'm like, oh, what the heck did this mean? I got to edit this. Maybe two days later I come back and I'm like, that was such a great idea. Let me make sure it's really ready to go before I submit. And then I'm like, oh gosh, no, what does this mean? This doesn't make sense to me. I need to look at it again. And so you want new eyes, fresh eyes looking at this. And plus also considering the time of day you're writing it. Are you stressed? Is it the morning, the nighttime, middle of the day? You know, whatever's your best writing time. Um, and, you know, think about what else you have going on uh, in your life. And so make sure you start early and edit over time. And they're not usually that lengthy. It's just a matter of getting those fresh eyes on it so you have a nice creative um, approach. Uh, one other tip I really like is creating a, a Word doc copy of this. And so whenever I'm going to submit a, a conference proposal, like I said, they're in different formats. And you're usually, nowadays, at least in, in, in our field, uh, you're entering everything online and then it goes away and that's it. And you don't get a copy of it, it's just gone. 
And so I like to make myself a Word document for each conference proposal. So if it was ACES, um, then I'm going to go ahead and write my title, you know, my content, my learning objectives, everything that I'm putting in the format that has to be submitted to them, I'm writing in a Word document. So I have that, uh, that copy for myself on file. And that helps me next year when the next conference proposal comes around, I already know what to expect. Yes, they can change things. They might change the format a little bit, uh, but for the most part, I know what to expect. This is really helpful for some of our bigger conferences. Like I said, the American Counseling Association conference is, is really big, and their proposal process is, is pretty intense. It's very lengthy. You have to have these different citations and to support every you know, aspect of your proposal, uh, and it takes quite a bit of time. And so when I know that time of year is coming around and I'm going to have to prepare that one, I can look because I have the document from last year. Okay. Any questions before we move forward? Okay. So, you know what you want to present. You're really passionate about whatever the area is. But you want other people to be passionate about this too. You want them to attend your session and know how important this is. So come up with a catchy title. I like to give folks the tip of create the title and a tagline, all right? So it's not just, um, I don't know, investigating the da 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 or whatever. Okay, well that's great, but if 20 other people say investigating the da 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 it's going to get lost and nobody's going to care. I want something to be really catchy and to grab their attention. And so one of them, not that this is life altering, but this is one of the ones I've used. So one of my areas of research is on post-traumatic growth. And so I really played with this, and this is one that I came up with that's been accepted to several conferences um, around the country, but post-traumatic growth, thriving in the aftermath. I don't have to say thriving in the aftermath of whatever, it's just thriving in the aftermath. You fill in the blank. And it's catchy, well I think it is, I think it's a pretty stellar title, um, maybe you don't, but I like it. So think about you know, what it would be for you, all right, and don't worry, we're going to have a little practice time uh, to get you started. Uh, I, I've seen folks do some, some funny things too, which I'm, I'm a little iffy about. Uh, oh gosh, I wish I could remember this one, but when I first read it, I'm like, oh my goodness, what are you, what are you talking about? And then I read the tagline, I'm like, oh, okay, okay, we're good. Uh, but it just, it, it grabbed my attention, but then I had to read the content to make sure it was something, you know, legit, something I really wanted to attend. Okay. So next part of the process of the proposal writing process is looking at the um, content overview. You want to include the most important information. So you might have a thousand characters that you can use. It might be 200 words you can use. Every proposal is different. Um, some go from a paragraph, some go to like, you know, I don't know, five paragraphs long for a content, um, content section. So you want to include the most important information. And so with a manuscript that you're writing for publication, you have to like cite every line, right? You have to support everything you're saying. It's a little different with these. Some of them, you might get like one citation in there to support what you're saying, maybe two, just to like put those key ones in there to show, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just making stuff up and I want to talk about the importance of trees. I'm telling you why, you know, because this, this, and this research was done. Other conference proposals might require you to use a certain amount of citations. In my field, I've only seen, a, um, I, oh gosh, a max of five citations uh, used in a conference proposal. Um, and that was, that's only for one conference proposal. So you just got to be careful and, and limit your use and make sure it's the most important ones. And also the most important information in that content overview. So you're telling the reader, what is this conference go um, session going to be about? You want the reviewer to know. They've read your tagline. They're interested. Now tell them exactly what, you know, what this is about, but using limited and, um, words and the most important words you need to use. Um, use terms that the reader is going to understand, because you have no idea who's reviewing me. They might not be as passionate about your area as you are. They might not know anything about your area of interest. Uh, and so you want to use simple terms, uh, but also they're relevant to your field, of course. Be straight to the point. You don't want to be like, you know, counseling is super important because it's life-changing and 
you're going to feel better about yourself and sleep better. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read that for 50 presentation proposals. Tell me something new. Tell me something that's going to grab my attention. And why is yours so unique? So be straight to the point. Okay? Like I said with citations, just be careful and limited. And you learn to like kind of craft your, your, your writing uh, to fit that space that you have. Like I said, you might be limited to 150 words. You might have 500 words that you can use. I don't know. Moving on to your learning objectives. So think about what is your audience going to walk away with? Okay? So you know what you're passionate about. Great. But what is your audience going to gain from attending your session? And also think about what would you want to gain from attending your session? This is what really helps me to figure out how am I going to write my learning objectives versus, you know, participants are going to learn about counseling. Well, who cares? They're going to learn about counseling from every other person presenting. What exactly, you know, what is so gripping that they're going to walk away from uh, my session with? And so some starts of this, and, and this might be different in your area, um, in your discipline, but usually ours start with, you know, participants will understand X, Y, and Z. Participants will be able to whatever. So let's say if I was, you know, talking about post-traumatic growth. Well, I might fill this in with participants will understand the post-traumatic growth model, counseling treatment, and then be able to, Counselors, you know, participants will be able to, um, I don't know. Differentiate. Yes. Yeah. Differentiate this or, or be able to um, employ the, the post-traumatic growth model with their clients. Okay. Okay. So here we have some, a little bit of practice time. And if you don't have paper, I'm going to go grab some. But what I'd like you to do is think about an area of interest that you have and something that you might be presenting soon. And you're going to come up with a title, see if you can come up with a catchy tagline, and three learning objectives. And then we'll go ahead and share those if you'd like and discuss. Yeah, okay, go ahead and share. Whoever would like to share what you came up with. So the title will be Dependency of Domestic Economy on International Education. Okay, hold on one second. So I gotta sit there and I get I'm a visual person. So go ahead and say it one more time. So the dependency of domestic economy on international education. Okay. Alright. Then learning objectives will be participants will realize the annual impact in billion dollars that international education has on the economy of the United States. Participants will see the increasing and decreasing trends and how it influences international education. Participants will understand the impact of international education directly or indirectly in their daily lives. Read that last one more time for me, please. Participants will understand the impact of international education directly or indirectly in their daily lives. Okay, all right. So, what came up for y'all? Did that sound clear? Was there anything that was unclear to you? I think it sounded clear and concise and I could follow it good. With uh, more so with the indirect effects. Um, seeing with that, if they want to be yeah, directly know what you're exposed to, or that was the only thing I was just curious about. But I think it sounds really good. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. It was very clear. Um, you know, a lot of times, that was something I meant to mention with the, the title. A lot of times you're limited to how many words you can use in a title, and all of a sudden you're like, how do I how do I convey everything I want to convey into five five words or ten words, whatever it is. And I thought that was really, um, that was really clear. How many words did you have in your title? Five. Five, yeah. Six, five. Nice. Thank you. Three. All right, do you all want to share yours? Sure. Okay. So this, that be as creative, and this I just pulled from my old poster. Okay. But it's the title is the long-term effects of Deepwater Horizon oil on DNA patterns in red drum okay. in Louisiana estuaries. Okay. And learning objectives that I want the audience to get from it was to understand what changes can occur at the DNA level in response to oil 
and to understand how oil is still present in the environment. This is the second one, but okay. to understand how oil is still present in the environment can cause harmful health effects in fish. Okay. And then three potential ways to reduce future oil spills after from hearing these okay. harmful effects. Okay. All right. So what comes up for y'all hearing that? It sounded pretty clear. I mean, I don't know much about your field, but it sounded pretty good. Okay. Yeah, same. For I mean, I have no um, knowledge of the field, yeah. but in a conference, you uh, you won't interact with somebody like me. Everybody over there will have knowledge. So. Yeah. Yeah. For for that, it sounds pretty good. It has the knowledge what it is right now, and then you have future recommendations, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it sounded like the learning objectives. I gotta have you go back to number two because I'm not sure I got that one. But it sounded like there was the the first one was directly related to the title. Yeah. The last one was like a future oriented yeah. um, so aspect. That practical significance. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second one was that like a more broader across all fish versus just red drum? Is that what you were conveying? Yeah, I was sort of trying to expand it more. Okay. From just red, from just red drum, but it, yeah, it sort of went further than the title. Okay. Said. But maybe if I change it just to harmful health effects in red drum specifically. Okay. But yeah, it sort of like bounce off the title. A okay. More. But, yeah. And so going back to your title, okay, count your words for me, please. Words were the long term effects of deep water horizon oil on DNA patterns. That's 10 in red drum. 13 in Louisiana estuaries, so 16. So 16. Yeah. So this is a great one to work with because you have to kind of get all that in there because you really want to be specific as what this is about. Yeah. Yeah. So how could we get that into 10 words or less? Is there anything that like, comes up for you right there that you feel like you could cut or tweak? Maybe getting rid of long-term effects and Okay. Deep water horizon, oil, and its influence on DNA patterns in red drum. Okay. And maybe not expanding to the Louisiana estuaries part. So yeah. think about this. You're, you're exactly uh, on the right track. So think about words that you could pull out of there to put into like your learning objectives, your content overview. Yeah. So in those, that sounds like some of the ones that you can take out. So long term, okay, well you're gonna talk about that in the content. You just need the title to grab their attention. Say, well what is this, this session gonna be about and why should I care? Okay, there it is. Then I go into the content. So if I look at the title, I'm like, well, this sounds pretty interesting. Let's see what it is. And then I go into the content, and I'm like, oh, okay, I see specifically we're talking about long term, we're talking about Louisiana, right? Yeah. A specific type of fish. So you can kind of play with that. Is that? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Cool. All right. Would you like to go ahead and share? Sure. First? Okay, so typically with a communication paper, you kind of have your catchy title first, and then you pretty much spell out exactly what your paper is about. So this is the uh, research proposal I, I'm working on right now. So far the title is, uh, let me tell you about my day, content of displaced descent messages. So basically what displaced descent is, is when you complain about like a specific part of your job to like a friend or a family member, so uh, my learning objectives, uh, participants will be, uh, oh, participants will learn the major content areas of displaced descent messages. Uh, participants will understand how displaced descent messages differ from, or serve different purposes than upward or lateral. So upward is complaining about a part of your job to your boss, and lateral is complaining about it to a coworker. And then my last one, uh, participants will be better able to understand the importance of displaced descent on organizational life. So it's kind of hard because I haven't done the study yet. I'm just like getting yeah. ready to do it. Yeah. Okay. But that's what I have so far based on like my lit review. Okay, cool. So what comes up for y'all? I thought that was really interesting. I like how you expanded to us some of those definitions. That was a <laughs> I know, I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> I figured, like, outside, yeah, even a lot of people's calm don't know that unless you're studying that. Yeah. Okay. Her, her, her title for me, it was broken down. It had two parts. Mm -hmm. You know how when you're talking to somebody, like, 
hey, come here, look at this. So she had the hey, come here part first, when she says, let me tell you about my day. And once they're there, that's when you talk about the actual the mm -hmm. title. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was catchy too, the titles. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and that's kind of how they all flow in calm. Like you get their attention and then you tell them, okay, this is exactly what this paper is about. Yeah. Okay, and so how many words was in your title? Mine was 12. 12, okay. So I don't, I don't know about your discipline. Typically I'm seeing things that are like, is the most so how could you reduce yours and could it yeah I would my idea to like reduce it is to kind of maybe play around with like the first catchy part because I think like the second part like the content of displays to send messages that I have to have so they know mm -hmm. okay this is what she's going to be talking about yeah but I guess I could play around with like whatever something catchy that comes to mind yeah okay so I, I don't know, I, I, I like it the way it is. I know. I don't know how to like, I don't know how to shorten it. I do too, I love it because it's catchy. Um, and then, so think about like when you're in those moments where you know you've come up with something you really love and then you have to edit and you're like, no, I can't take away this one, this one word. It, it's gonna ruin everything. All right, so you could play around with that. Uh, and what was it, come tell me? What was it again? Uh, the like tagline part is content of displaced descent messages. And the first part? Let me tell you about my day. Oh, man. It's good. about uh, how you have a bad day at work or a bad moment at work. Well, it's about, uh, specifically it's about like what you say to your friends or your family members when you have a complaint about like a policy at work. So how are you choosing to phrase that? And part of it, too, is going to be how you present yourself. So, like, are you a victim? Are you the hero? Are you passive, active? May I come look at yours? Sure. Okay. So, this little process right here is something I'd recommend for you moving forward. And so, um, I, I've worked with my colleagues before um, when I, I'm stuck at a place where I have to only fit in a certain amount of, you know, words or certain content, and I know I'm passionate about this topic, so I want to fit all this stuff in here that's not going to fit. And so use your colleagues, talk about these ideas, share your stuff, um, share your works, and, and get their feedback. And that goes back to the whole plan in advance, and give yourself plenty of time to edit. Uh, and it's, it's always nice, I think, in my experience, it's always been nice to ask a colleague, because I get a fresh perspective. Just like you were saying, well, this is what's come into mind for me. How can I look at it from this way? Or, you know, just having this little conversation that we just had here. Okay. So here are just your key points to remember. Know what is expected of you for your proposal and what's expected at the conference. Start writing early so you give time for review and edit. Okay. And have fun with it. Um, some of these can be, like, daunting processes, it seems like. Uh, but hopefully you can have a little bit of fun with it, and, and usually for me that starts with the tagline. <laughs> I'm taking my title down, I'm like, okay, all right, I can get things going here. Uh, and just have fun with the whole process. Okay, any questions? This is, uh, this is all keeping in mind that you are presenting individually, right? If you have a group presentation or somebody that you collaborated with, then you know, this could change. Uh, it can, and, and like, what part are you speaking to specifically? Like the actual writing process? Yes, because then that's a good point. Because uh, then you have to get three different people to have their their writing flow. And so usually what happens there uh, is we have a primary writer and a secondary, depending on how big the group is. Or we divide up different tasks and uh, one is the writer while other person is doing these different components, perhaps putting the poster together, maybe they were heavy in data collection, uh, whatever it is. Uh, and if there's multiple people working on a proposal, and, I, and I've had this before, where there's like three of us, three or four of us writing, uh, then one of us is in charge of making it flow at the end. So give me the key points and I'll make it sound, you know, nice and clean and crisp. So, yeah. Good question. Thanks. Anything else? All right, well that's it. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope it was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions along the way, let me know.